This is the presentation on denialism and climate change for online biology at Oklahoma City Community College. I am Dennis Anderson. Denialism is the rejection of a basic concept that is supported by overwhelming evidence and scholarly experts in a given discipline. A classic example is the rejection of the idea that the earth is round. Members of the Flat Earth Society reject the idea of a round earth. They are in denial. During World War II, Hitler executed six million Jews in what has been called the Holocaust. Today, there are Holocaust deniers. These deniers include members of the Ku Klux Klan and some people in the Mideast who are enemies of Israel, including the former president of Iran. They claim that Jews made up the story of the Holocaust so people would feel sorry for them. Korpernikus was a famous Polish scientist who lived from 1473 to 1543. He developed the heliocentric theory, which is the idea that the sun is the center of our solar system and the earth and other planets orbit the sun. Galileo was an Italian scientist who lived after Copernicus. He was the first to use a telescope to study the heavens. He recorded detailed observations about the movement of the planets, which he used as evidence to confirm the heliocentric theory. This new theory clashed with the traditional concept that the earth was the center of God's creation and everything in the sky revolved around this special creation. Galileo was called a fool by the establishment. They said you could watch the sun move across the sky every day. It was obvious to them that the sun was literally moving. The theory contradicts the Bible where it states that God stopped the sun from moving so Joshua could have more time to capture a city. Joshua 10:12 to 13 Galileo was summoned before the church inquisition and found guilty of heresy. 400 years later, the church apologized to Galileo. The people in power during the 1600s were in denial about how the universe is organized. Why do people deny science? Some think that nature works according to their ideology. They're not open to other ideas and are often motivated by fear, greed, prejudice, or just plain ignorance. This man does not accept 150 years of scientific research about communicable diseases that have saved the lives of millions of children. He's basically saying, I'm willing to bet the life of my child on my complete lack of scientific understanding. He does not realize that most of the deaths from diseases for which we have vaccines are people who are not vaccinated. I remember telling a friend of mine in grade school about where babies come from. He told me I was wrong. He said his parents would never do anything like that. It was nasty. This did not fit well with his ideology of how nature worked. In the 1950s, scientists and doctors reported smoking may cause cancer. Tobacco companies rejected the idea. They were afraid it would decrease their profits. Politicians from tobacco states feared their economies would be hurt. The sale of tobacco products brings in billions of dollars. Greed motivated the rich tobacco companies to reject the idea that smoking could be harmful. 
The executives of tobacco companies developed a strategy to refute the claims of science and medicine. They formed a committee named the Tobacco Industry Research Committee, or TIRC. They hired their own scientists and paid them well to do research that would create doubt about the mounting evidence of smoking and cancer. What they were doing was pseudoscience. They became the merchants of doubt by producing numerous public service messages on TV about smoking and cancer. Some of these old videos are currently available on YouTube. They're full of false and misleading information designed to confuse the general public about the dangers of smoking. The Tobacco Research Committee also released a pamphlet named A Scientific Perspective on the Cigarette Controversy. It basically stated that there was no proof that cigarette smoking is a cause of lung cancer. Their propaganda said that the case against tobacco is based on constantly rehashed statistical theories. They falsely state that there is no proof that smoking has ever caused cancer or any other disease, and science doesn't know what causes cancer. They sent letters to the editors of newspapers and to politicians and doctors denying that cancer is caused by smoking. The tobacco companies purposely deceived the public about the safety of smoking. Their scientific consultants were just puppets who followed the wishes of the company execs. The tobacco companies spent millions of dollars on false advertising. This ad reports that more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Their fraudulent ad was exposed when it was determined how the ads were created. Tobacco companies would help sponsor medical conventions. They would give uh, a free pack of cigarettes to each doctor as part of their orientation packet to the convention. Later the same day, each doctor was asked what brand of cigarette they had in their pocket at that time. And of course, it was almost always the camel cigarettes they were given earlier in the day. Similar ads claim that scientists and educators smoke Kent cigarettes. They even went so far as to advertise that doctors and science endorsed smoking. They showed nurses giving wounded soldiers cigarettes and babies complimenting their mommies for smoking. They obviously did not mention the thousands of babies who died from secondhand smoke. Famous movie stars were paid to endorse various brands of cigarettes. John Wayne was a chain smoker who developed lung cancer and stomach cancer, both of which are caused by smoking. The tobacco lobby spent millions of dollars to influence Congress not to ban smoking or the sale of tobacco products. In 1962, President Kennedy directed the Surgeon General to form a committee to investigate smoking and cancer. The committee was made of 10 prominent scientists and doctors. They reviewed 7,000 papers and presentations about smoking and cancer. In 1964, the report on smoking and health was released by the Surgeon General. They concluded smoking causes cancer. 
executives of the tobacco companies were called to appear before Congress, and they all swore under oath that tobacco does not cause cancer, and they are still in denial. Six million people die each year from smoking. There are 7,000 chemicals in cigarette smoke, and 70 of them cause several different kinds of cancer. The tobacco industry chooses money over human life. Brian, in this picture, was only 34 when he died of lung cancer caused by smoking. The World Health Organization reports that American tobacco companies are now giving free cigarettes to children in 68 different foreign countries. They apparently hope to get the kids hooked on cigarettes and become new consumers of their deadly product. Of course, they're not concerned that thousands of these children will die with cancer or other diseases because they believe tobacco is not harmful, or so they would have us believe. The tobacco industry strategy worked so well for them that other science deniers have copied it. This includes those who deny climate change, evolution, and the age of the earth and universe. Next, we will look at the theory of global warming, also known as climate change. Carbon dioxide and other gases trap heat in the atmosphere. This is actually a good thing up to a point. If the atmosphere did not trap heat, the earth would be cold like the moon and would not support life. On the other extreme, if our atmosphere were as thick as that on Venus, our temperature would be over 600 degrees and not compatible with life. So, there is a delicate balance that must be maintained. When extra carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere, more heat is trapped and the Earth's temperature goes up. Currently, excess carbon dioxide is produced by burning fossil fuels. This slide illustrates the carbon cycle. Animals and plants release carbon dioxide when they metabolize organic compounds such as sugar to release energy. The carbon dioxide goes up in the atmosphere. Some of the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere dissolves in the ocean. When plants and animals die, their bodies may be buried in the earth and after millions of years of heat and pressure, their remains turn into oil, coal, and natural gas or fossil fuels. We burn these fossil fuels to generate electricity, power our vehicles, homes, and factories. The problem we face is the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is increasing. The big question is why? This graph shows that the current level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is the highest in the past 650,000 years. When we compare the recent history of the Earth's temperature with the amount of carbon dioxide in the air, there is a perfect correlation. The Earth is warming because carbon dioxide is increasing in the atmosphere. Why is there more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now than the last 650,000 years? It does not take a rocket scientist to figure this out. We are releasing millions of tons of carbon dioxide by rapidly burning fossil fuels that were deposited over millions of years. CO2 is going into the atmosphere many times faster than the Earth can pull it out of the atmosphere. 
if you have water running into a bathtub faster than it's going out through a drain, then the tub's going to overfill and cause a problem. This problem could be averted if you turn down the faucet so not as much water is entering the tub. That's what we need to do to reduce global warming. What are some of the consequences of global warming? This is a photo of a glacier in Alaska. The picture on the left shows the glacier ice extending out to the shoreline of the ocean. The picture on the right was taken a few years later. Can you see how much the glacier has melted back? The melted ice adds water to the ocean and causes sea level to rise. Carbon dioxide has increased the temperature on land and in the atmosphere. However, its biggest effect has been on the oceans. Water expands when it gets warmer. The combination of ocean water expanding and melting ice has caused sea level to rise about 10 to 20 centimeters during the past century. The rate has been increasing faster during the last 20 years. If this continues, coastlines will eventually be covered by water. Now it may take 50 or more years before Miami and New Orleans are under the ocean. We can't wait that long to fix the problem. It will be much easier to correct now than later. When carbon dioxide combines with water, it forms carbonic acid. The level of carbonic acid in the ocean is increasing and is very harmful to coral reefs. Many of the ocean's coral reefs are being destroyed. On the left is a healthy coral reef and on the right is one that has been destroyed by carbonic acid. Many of the organisms near the bottom of the marine food chains spend at least part of their life in healthy coral reefs. If they die off, then animals higher up the food chain will be affected. Do you remember how the dinosaurs suddenly became extinct 65 million years ago? A large asteroid struck the Earth, producing dust and debris that blocked sunlight for years. After the plants died from lack of sunlight, many animals who fed on the plants died. Eventually, 70% of the life forms went extinct from that event. We don't really know for sure what could happen if all the coral reefs are destroyed, but will probably impact our food supply. Higher temperature in the atmosphere and oceans cause more severe hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, droughts, and wildfires, which impact wildlife and man. A scientific consensus is when the vast majority of scientists agree about something in science. In the 1960s, scientists and doctors reached a consensus that smoking causes cancer. Currently, scientists have come to a consensus that humans are causing our climate change. This page is just a partial list of 200 scientific organizations that hold the position that climate change has been caused by human action. Members of these organizations include the brightest minds in their field of expertise. 97% of papers about climate change that are published in scientific journals agree that global warming is happening and that we are the cause. Likewise, 97 out of 100 client experts agree that humans are causing global warming. So why would people reject the findings 
of so many experts on our climate. I'll give you a hint. What industry profits the most from processing and selling fossil fuels? The five biggest oil companies make about $375 million a day. They are very motivated to keep extracting fossil fuels to produce energy and generate money for themselves. Big Oil has a propaganda campaign similar to what the big tobacco companies used 50 years ago. Both spend millions to influence politicians. They use unscientific arguments and distort science. Oil companies are the new merchants of doubt. One of their arguments often appears in newspapers, talk shows, and political speeches is that global warming has not increased for the past 15 years. Therefore, climate change is not happening. This is a common tactic called cherry picking that is often used by deniers. It is very similar to taking a quote out of context to make it sound the opposite of what the original author was saying. Look at the graph on this slide that shows the Dow Jones Industrial Average for the past 100 plus years. It goes up and down almost every week. There are periods of several years where it has not gone up and even gone down in value. When you draw a trend line on this graph, it's very obvious that the overall trend is up. A cherry picker would only look at a few bad years and conclude the stock market is not a good place to make money. We know that's not true. A hundred dollars invested in the year 1900 would be worth two and a half million dollars today. You could also just pick out the five best years and project making hundreds of millions of dollars. Cherry picking is statistically unsound and unscientific. Real science does not use this phony tactic. Some politicians argue that it will cost too much to reduce carbon emissions. In reality, the cost now will be cheap compared to what it will cost later if we do nothing now. Many climate deniers do not even understand the difference between weather and climate. Weather is the day-to-day -day changes, whereas climate is the overall trend over an extended period of time, which could be 25 or 100 years. Here is an example by our own Senator Inhofe. He claims that climate change is a hoax. He recently gave a speech in the U.S. Senate. Do you know what this is? It's a snowball, Inhofe said, holding the snowball aloft. It's just from outside here, so it's very, very cold out, very unseasonable. Does he not know the difference between weather and climate, or is he trying to deceive us? Of course, Oklahoma is a major energy producing state, so many of our politicians don't want to accept climate change, just like tobacco producing states initially rejected the link between smoking and cancer. Who would you trust for brain surgery? A butcher with limited knowledge of human anatomy or a neurosurgeon with 12 years of medical school training? Who do you believe about climate change? Politicians with limited knowledge of science and ties to special interest groups or scientists with eight plus years of college and many years of experience studying climates?
the end.